Uh, hello and welcome to the December 1st episode of TV Coast to Coast, a weekly chat between uh, a geographically diverse lineup of TV critics. Uh, the topics this time are the fall season finale of AMC's The Walking Dead, the premiere of the new scripted Bravo series, Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, an American master's profile of Bing Crosby, and NBC's Peter Pan Live. Joining the conversation this time are Mark DeWidziak in Cleveland and Vicki Hyman in New Jersey. Portland's Christy Turnquist is off for a couple of weeks. I'm your host, Dave Walker. Look for all of our affiliations on screen and also enjoy lots of links at those sites and in the text below. Let's get to it. Mark, how did The Walking Dead send viewers off to Christmas break? I know this finale probably had a lot of division of opinion among the fans. I haven't really checked in with the uh, with the responses yet, but I like it. I was very much enamored of this finale. The, uh, no, uh, not going to give away anything too big in case anybody did not see it. But this was an amazing ending emotionally. I, I think everybody knew that somebody was going to die. A major character was going to die. And so it's not a really a spoiler to say that. But this was not just killing a character for the sake of killing a character. This was endemic to the plot. It had a huge emotional payoff when it occurred. And you could pretty much guess who the character was. The worst part of this season was... A la the usual Walking Dead, if they give somebody a lot of story all of a sudden, there's a pretty good chance they're going to off the character. <laughs> so you've got a pretty good guess as to who the character was that they killed last night. But again, it, when they got there, it was, a, it was a really, really well done scene. And I've been thinking about the scene ever since and interpreting it and reinterpreting it in my mind. And if a finale can do that, it's got to be a pretty good finale. So I, I, I really think it sets it up nice. It leaves you thinking it's not the same way they've killed other characters off in the past. It, it was different. And the other part of the thing that I liked was, about it was that it brought all the stories. They've been doing a lot of time shifting this uh, during the last uh, eight episodes. And, and all of a sudden, everything sort of came together in a very nice way, setting up the next one. I haven't liked everything they've done in these eight in these eight episodes, not by a long shot. And last night, I felt like it was a little rushed. It felt like they were trying to get a lot of story in, but when it got to the actual moment, it paid off very nicely. So they still have me. The Walking Dead always does this dance of pushing me away and luring me back, pushing me away and luring me back. And I have to say, after last night, they still got me. Becky. Well, just a note on The Walking Dead. I saw it too, and I did not have quite the warm fuzzies about the finale that you did because the character who died, I think, had been kind of sidelined for a number of episodes, and I just didn't feel very invested in this particular character anymore. And so I kind of knew this particular character was going to go, and then when that character went, it was like, okay. I, I didn't really buy it. I still really like the season. I really love the fact that they moved forward. They didn't get they didn't get um, strung up, um, hung up in any of the particular areas so much. I was worried that we were going to have terminus for like the entire season. But I am looking forward to them leaving the Atlanta area, which I um, uh, they have indicated they're going to be doing. So, I'd, I'd love to get <laughs> into this with you, but we can't without <laughs> okay. really you know spoiling okay. it for everybody. But. Um, so I will move forward to something completely different. Um, as you know, I am basically a real housewives of New Jersey housewife. Uh, I'm not sorry, a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I swear. Um, for, for many, many episodes, for many, many months um, during the year, because Real Housewives in New Jersey. So it was with great trepidation that I plopped um, a Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce into my DV into my um, DVD player. I am. Happy and somewhat surprised to report that Bravo pulled off something that was actually pretty interesting here. They developed a series that is completely within the Bravo wheelhouse. You have um, women behaving badly and the trappings of wealth and sexcapades and, you know, very blunt sex talk, etc. But it's done with real humor and real pathos, and um, it has a really highly watchable cast. Um, um, uh, Lisa Edelstein, who is a Jersey girl, um, stars as a self-help Guru Abby McCarthy, who is um, in the midst of splitting from her rather emasculated husband Jake, played by Paul Edelstein, no relation, um, 
and it's, it's a dramedy. Um, the light stuff comes off like uh, Sex and the City the later years. Um, but what I thought was really interesting was the, the, the more drama moments of it, the more dramatic moments. Um, the positioning of women on the show as breadwinners. Yes, Abby's estranged husband has embarked on a relationship with a much younger woman, but Abby and um, one of her girlfriends, Lila, played by Janine Garofalo, um, are both in these power positions in their relationship, in their marriage, and um, they're both not really blameless for the integration of their unions. So in fact, it seems that Abby has sort of been hanging on to Jake for the sake of her brand as much as anything else. Um, so I, I actually found it very interesting, very entertaining, and I can see it becoming a hit for Bravo, and deservedly so. So Bravo, Bravo. Dave? Thanks, Mark and Vicky. I, uh, I can't, I'm really looking forward to that too. It's like, isn't it Bravo's like first scripted? Uh... Well, it's their first admittedly scripted show. <laughs> right, right, got that. Um, okay, so completely changing gears another direction. I've got a couple of uh, recommendations for the DVR this week, and both in musical, um, musically oriented. The first is an excellent PBS overview of the life and art of Bing Crosby, uh, which digs deep into both. Crosby was a true multimedia superstar in his prime, a giant in musical recordings, radio, and film. There's a seasonal hook here, of course, which is Crosby's beloved recording of White Christmas and the memories viewers of a certain age will have of his many Christmas TV specials. But his influence and legacy are timeless and seasonless, as the special demonstrates in great, sometimes gritty, detail. Off the mic and off camera, Crosby could be a real son of a bitch, um, to which some of his children and loved ones, and even Crosby, via haunting Dictabelt letter dictations, testify in the documentary. Uh, but others, most notably biographer Gary Giddens, speak to what endures of Crosby's professional life, including his music and his road pictures with Bob Hope. Bing Crosby rediscovered as an entertaining and enlightening couple of hours, and it airs in my market at 7 o'clock Tuesday. Elsewhere, check your local listings. Uh, uh, another musical offering this week is NBC's Peter Pan Live, airing Thursday night, starring Allison Williams in the title role and Christopher Walken as Captain Hook. The special uh, follows on the network success at this time last year with a similar live production of The Sound of Music. It's also a really neat callback to the original NBC production of the same story, which recorded the mid-1950s Broadway musical starring Mary Martin. Uh, I grew up watching that special, so I checked out an NBC preview last week, and I have to admit, I got sucked right in. Williams, who otherwise co-stars on HBO's Girls, and Walken, who is Christopher Walken, should be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, let's say I've booked my flight to Neverland. Uh, how about you, Mark and Vicky? Are you Peter Pan folks or not? I am, and I and I, and I have a strong reservation about this. <laughs> uh, and, and, and to me, I, I and, I, and, I'm, and I'm looking forward to see what they do. But I am really from I, and I watch the previews as well. And I know you cannot judge from a preview. But I already do not like what Christopher Walken is doing, mm -hmm. which is pseudo Johnny Depp. I don't need that. That's not Hook. That is it, it, Hook is a it's greatly theatrical character. He's wonderful. He has this 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 ego that just soars, and he has all of these neuroses. And Barry put all that in, and I'm watching Walken, and he's doing Walken. <laughs> That's not Hook. I mean, you know, the great hooks are like Cyril Richard and Boris Karloff, who could really go right to the rafters with it. That's what you need for Hook. And I realize I haven't seen really frame one of this. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm willing to be surprised. But if I have a reservation going into this, is that this is being produced under the influence of, of Pirates of the Caribbean. And I really don't need Studio Jack Sparrow for this because that's not who Hook is. Hook is one of the great characters of literature. And you need to be, get that theatricality into that because Hook loves to play to the rafters. And that is not what I'm seeing right now in these very, very well scrubbed previews. But again, Vicky, ready to be surprised. Vicky, are you going to watch? I am going to watch. Um, I have exactly the same reservations as Mark. Um, from what little I've seen, uh, he, yeah, he's, he's just walking, whereas everybody else seems to really inhabit their characters. And, you know, kudos to them. But, you know, I'm going to watch probably unwillingly. I have no, you know, nice memories of this. I've actually never seen a performance of Peter Pan uh -huh. in my life. It's just not something that I grew up with. 
and I'll watch, but I am not hopeful. All right. Well, that should do it for this week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, everything from The Walking Dead to Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, Bing Crosby to Peter Pan. Uh, we'll see you back here next time. And thanks, Mark and Vicki. Take care. Okay. Bye. Take care.